Good afternoon, ladies and gents. How you all doing? Come on in. Welcome. <laughs> I would tell you to sit in the front row, but there's only one seat. How you all doing, ladies and gents? Good, good, good. So who are you here to see? Tom Parker Bowles. There we go. There we go. Well, welcome. I'm Michelle Mukri. It's really exciting. You know what the great thing is? After today, you get to say, I had lunch with Tom because it's really an intimate theater and you'll get to sample all of his delicacies. So welcome. Feel free to tweet away using the hashtag Good Food Wine Show. There we go. You're going to tweet? Hashtag GFWS2015, but please turn your phones on to silent. Before we welcome Tom out, guys, it's his last show in South Africa. He has to leave immediately afterwards, so we're going to give him a real warm welcome, right? But before we bring him up on stage, just to note the exits as well as behind you, and if you do need, the gents and ladies is to my right. Ladies and gents, let's give a warm welcome on the count of three. We're going to count down. Three, two, one. Okay. More, more, All more. Right. Where we go? <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 48 hours in Johannesburg, beautiful city. I come from London, and I've been here for such a short time out of time. It seems ridiculous to come to this beautiful, lovely country and be here for two days. So next time, I'm going to bring my children. I'm going to bring my wife. My wife's half South African. I'm bringing her back biltong. <laughs> biltong, very important. She doesn't think that the English biltong is any good. So she said, just please, one thing to bring back from South Africa, biltong. So... I'll probably get busted at customs on the way, but there we go. Um, and obviously, I haven't said that. You know, I, I'm just talking uh, allegedly, uh, bringing back Bill Tom from South Africa. But um, anyway, thank you all for coming. And so I'm just fiddling with this as usual. And today, I did some British food this morning, but this is my other real love, spicy food. Chilies. Who loves chili? Anyone like chilies here? Yeah, good. Yeah, fantastic. I love chilies. It is one of the great fruits of the world. It makes me excited. It makes my taste buds excited. I sometimes overdo it. Um, but these two dishes are from Southeast Asia, which is one of my favorite areas uh, of, of the world, really, to eat. And I'd far rather be sitting, you know, among the fag smoke and diesel fumes of you know, a wobbly plastic stool eating street food in Bangkok or Vientiane or whatever than in one of those really boring, sort of pretentious Michelin restaurants with the smears and the big towers and the, you know, the presentation, it's all sort of snooty waiters trying to upsell booze to you and stuff like that. That's not what eating is about for me. Eating is about sharing, breaking breads, sitting down with friends and big flavors. So this first dish is an Indonesian dish. Now, Indonesia, obviously a big archipelago, archipelago, I, was, geez, I can't even say it, lots of islands. Um, and it has a fascinating food culture. And you find at night when the sun goes down and the coals start being lit up and you have satays. And you get satays obviously in Malaysia, you get it in Thailand. This one is slightly different. It's made with beef and it's, it's sort of minced steak. I think it's important to use the minced steak because you want the flavor of the meat. You can use rump. You want a lot of fat in there because remember fat is flavor. Fat is good for you. Don't listen to any of those people who say that fat is bad for you. Fat is wonderful. We should embrace fat and love it. But anyway... We're now going to get involved. So we have our lovely steak here and chopped up. You can hand chop it, but if you can avoid using the sort of supermarket mince, because it's fine for some things, but you want a bit more flavor in this. So it does cost a little bit more, but buy the best meat you can afford, put it through the mince, so get your butcher to put it through the mince, so chop it. Okay. So first up, I've made a sambal. I haven't. These brilliant guys here have made a sambal oleg. Sambal, of course, in Indonesia and, you know, Malaysia, sambal sauce chili base. You could have dried shrimp in it, dried fish. This is basically just some hot chilies cooked up um, in, in some water and softened and then basically uh Oh, yeah, yeah, that's well, that's, and this is, this is the sambal, isn't it? Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Um, these guys do all the work, you see, and I just ponce around doing nothing. Um, anyway, this is a good sort of um, sambal oleg. It's got a little bit of salt, it's got a little bit of vinegar, it's got a lot of punch, and you'll serve it with this wonderful satay. So that's there, and I'll pass it around in a minute, getting this nice and hot. Now, there's a paste. Now, you can see the paste. It's a nice sort of fragrant paste that dances around the tongue and sends the taste buds into sort of fits of joy. This is food to wake you up, food to make you excited. Oh, gosh, thank you. And I've got all things. So I would usually, I'd show you, I'd just put it in the magic mix, or the, sorry, the Taurus, um, and I'd show you the paste. But I'll just talk you through it because you don't need to see coriander seeds um, and galangal 
and um, all the garlic and sugar and soy sauce, you know what it is, you know, it's just gonna go But these are the ingredients. Toasting these coriander seeds like you toast spice to bring out those lovely oils, to make them fragrant and delicious and wonderful. So, all of these things, imagine I've chucked them in there, or if I was being truly authentic, I'd use a pestle and mortar. Actually, I might do that, why not? Uh, chuck it in here. And I love this. And this is the noise that reminds me of Thailand, it reminds me of Laos, it reminds me of Vietnam. This sort of, that pop, pop noise you hear in the street. Because this is one of the most versatile tools or bits of kit, and most important in Southeast Asian cookery. And this is a particularly good one, it's quite sexy, this one. Um, anyway, you've got your coriander seeds and chuck in your garlic. And the purists will say, you should use, you should always do it this way because you get more flavor. Now, not all of us have five hours to make a paste. You know, we're, we live in a busy world, so it's not the end of the world if you chuck it in the old uh, magic mix. Um, so that goes down And then a bit of sugar. And again, if you can get the soft uh, muscovado sugar, even better, but a bit of sweetness. Just going in there. And so on and so forth. A bit of soy sauce. And you're getting, I wish you could, I mean, you can come and smell it if you want, but it smells wonderful and you'll taste it later. But the point is, carry on pounding and pounding and pounding until you come up with, ta-da, this wonderful and lovely chef. So, now what's I doing? What do I miss out on this? This is a problem. You do these recipes, you go around the world, you pick up recipes and you're watching people with street food. And I speak no Thai or anything like that. So you have to sort of, what's that? And you end up writing down these recipes and sort of getting bits and pieces and then adapting it for a Western kitchen. Because there are lots of ingredients you can never get um, in South Africa or in the UK or in Australia. So you, um, you adapt as best. But anyway, lovely paste. And all you do with these, I'm always moaning about. Le Creuse, fantastic brand, but I'm not quite sure about these. Uh, everyone moans about these, don't they? You do have, you do, you just have to. Um, okay. And it's the... Actually, what did I put in there? Oh, there's the shallots, of course, going there as well. Shallots, boom, boom, boom. Now, these are big shallots, again, in Thailand, in Indonesia. Very small shallots, much sweeter, a bit more intense, but you have to use what you can get. And South Africa really is blessed with some of the best ingredients I've ever tasted. You've got everything here, wonderful meat and spices. Um, and um, it's, you know, to come here, I was last here 20 years ago with my parents. Um, and it's a very different place now. You see this, you know, just looking at the supplies, the spice, the biltong, the, the cheeses. This is a real food culture here. And it's very exciting to be here and sort of, you know, be privileged enough to come and have a look around and talk to all the producers and suppliers and everything else. Because it's just, I'm obsessed with food. I, you know, I wake up thinking what I'm going to have for lunch. At lunch, I'm thinking what I'm going to cook for dinner. At dinner, you know, I cook and think what I'm going to do the next day. And, you know, I think anyone who loves food will agree that there are some just some fantastic stuff here and it's exciting, gets me very, very thrilled to see all this wonderful stuff. Anyway, I've mixed all that together. Skewers. Now, the key to skewers, ideally you'd be cooking these over coals, so you get that lovely sort of caramelized, smoky taste. Obviously, this is just, well, we can't have coals in this thing. So what we're doing is we've got these bamboo skewers, which I soaked. And that means they're not going to burn or char, so you can you can just put them onto this. And it's better, this is a fantastic bit of kit, it's just obviously a bit of cast iron that gets very, very, very hot. Um, but it gives you that nice char. Okay, so all it is, and this is the point, make it into tiny little balls. Thread. And you can see how easy, it's just the paste, chuck it in the magic mix. And then the meat, mix with the paste, and then make the sambal, and you have this wonderful... As you can see, I'm not quite like John and Reza and all the proper chefs. Um, I'm very much at home. So on it goes. And there's enough fat in that meat. You don't need to use any oil or anything like that. So let's keep going. because. And this is what my sort of food is about. I say that my food. How can I sort of nick the cuisine of entire countries? But the food I love is this sort of easy, uh, uncomplicated, but packed with flavor. It has different contrasts of, of texture and bit of chili and a bit of, uh, you know, all these wonderful Southeast Asian ingredients. And my book, Plug Time, um, called Let's Eat Meat, is obviously about me. But it's about eating, uh, eating, eat meat, but eat less and eat better. And also those cuts, those lovely, wonderful cuts of beef that, and, and chicken, not the breast, 
not the sirloin steak, but all the bits that people forget about, the slow-cooked bits, like the, the shin or the cheek. You know, these are cheap and they're packed with flavour. It's just a question of knowing, you know, a couple of minutes of saying, okay, slow-cook them and they become that meltingly tender, wonderful sort of stuff. And I don't think we eat enough offal either. Does anyone here like offal? <laughs> not many, two of you. Okay, brains, kidneys, uh, liver... Everyone looking appalled apart from you guys um, there. But it is, it is um, just, I, I think offal is exciting. I think if we eat animals, it is sort of our responsibility without finger wagging or being sanctimonious or any of that rubbish. Um, it's our responsibility to eat pretty much all we can, the nose to tail. Otherwise, you know, it's such a waste. Uh, and again, there's me banging on about the cheap cuts and this is chopped sirloin steak. But there we go. <laughs> there are all sorts of recipes in it for stuff from all over the world, English, French, Italian. There is a boboti, am I saying it right? Boboti, am I saying it right? Boboti, boboti. And that's in it, and that you see is many people's idea, just as the whole world thinks that English food is crap, um, which when done well, it's not. Uh, same with this idea, you know, what's a great South African dish, boboti. But I've just found so many dishes in the last two days. I've been eating bunny chow. We've got, we've got a bunny chow shop in London now. Um, and Mrs. Ball's chutney, and oh, all these wonderful sort of um, dishes inspired, you know, for, for, with, with Indian influences and Malaysian influences. And, you know, I could sit and eat the curries here for many, many years and be happy. Um, is that all right, Chef, if, if I just give you those um, to carry on cooking? Because everyone's got it. Are you, you, you hungry? Good. Because in the UK, this rubbish health and safety nonsense means that you can't give away food. Uh, whereas here, None of that nonsense. And that's quite right. So I'm washing my hands. Very important, obviously, when you're doing meat. Wash your hands. Ugh. You know, there are some things of health and safety that are a complete waste of time. Wash your hands is not one of them. Um, it's just, obviously, key, basic kitchen. As I said there, sat there, and that's a sandbar. Thank you so much, Chef. Now, on to shampoo. Lab. Lab is a dish, as I'm sure you all know. It's, it's basically a sort of original forms of raw meat salad. In Laos and northern Thailand, you will find it's basically raw buffalo with skin, with a bit of the guts, uh, the lungs, the liver, every bit of it. Sometimes a bit of bile. Now the bile duct is uh, it's pretty bitter, green. It's, it's an interesting experience. Um, but it's quite a visceral, punchy, chilli dish. Now I, I'm not going to do that one for you today because you all just run out and call me an idiot um so this is a then there's a classic sort of chicken where you cook it in a bit of stock this actually is called a shan pork lard and the shan are people who are mainly a tribal people but you'll find them in burma and parts of laos and it's slightly different because of the spice mix now the spice mix and the spice paste is at the heart of all this sort of southeast asian cooking and in it it's very very simple garlic cloves which have been toasted on a dry pan, you want that smoky, lovely, wonderful taste that takes me straight back onto the street of all these wonderful cities. So you just dry fry them for about 10 minutes, very slowly, so you get a char and you get that caramelization of flavor. You're just bringing another level of flavor. Um, lemongrass, dried chilies, um, and we've got, we haven't got dried chilies, have we? No, okay, so imagine there are chilies in here. We, do we have any fresh chilies at all? Or do we? Do, is that all right, the hottest ones you have? <laughs> Thank you so much, Chef. These guys, by the way, as I keep saying, do all the work, and I just wander around having a nice time. So, the, you know, the key thing is this thing. We've got in this, so you're putting in your lemongrass. Now, we all know what lemongrass is, obviously. Beautiful, fragrant. There, we've got the garlic. In it goes. Little bit of the veggie oil here. Thank you. Oh. In it goes. And again, if I was being authentic, I'd be doing it in that. But, you know, you've got better things to do than watch me being authentic. A uh, little bit more of the lemongrass. Now, the chilies are absolutely uh, key and very, very important because dried chilies and fresh chilies, all different contrasts, all, I mean, all different sort of types of flavors. The dry has a heat that is a builder. And you get those little scud ones, they call tiny, that are fierce and floral, but very quick. You know, and you eat them, and it's hot, and then it calms down. But chilies aren't just about heat. You know, they're about, you know, the flavor and the texture and everything else. But I'm just going to wait for these chilies to go in, because without the chilies, you know, it, it wouldn't really be the paste. This is at the heart of the dish. So I'm going to wait for that. But 
thanks to the joys of this wonderful food show, here's something I made earlier, which is pork, good pork, minced, uh, lots of fat in there, and mixing in, you are a brilliant man, thank you so much, lovely, let's try that. Quick thing about, chi everyone loves chilies. People talk about the heat of chilies being in the seas, and that's true to a certain extent, but the real truth, the real heat of, of the um, cap capsicum, capsicium, which is a, a, a sort of ar alkaloid irritant, and the real heat is up at the shoulder, in the membrane and, and the uh, seeds up here. So if you've got one of those friends who say they can eat tons of chilies or the rest of it, you bite the end off, and there's not so much heat down there, give him or her that bit up there, and then watch them just, you know, go absolutely mad. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you can, people always say, take the seeds out for less heat. Well, it's sort of true, um, but not entirely. So I'm just going to cut these ends off, chuck it in. I've got the ginger, I've got the galangal. All that lovely stuff goes in. There's shallots in there, and then. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, right, and now if I can work it, every other demo I've managed to muck up using this machine. This shows how brilliant I am at these things. Oh, it's not working? Yeah, here we go. Oh, oh, magic, magic. Put a little bit more of that oil in there. And this is a sort of, with the fresh, obviously with this one we've used the dry chilies, but it's just to show you. And you want it in so it gets to a really nice consistency, because the key to it is cooking out the paste. Um, and here, he, okay. There's no separate spice paste, is there? I'm just making this one. Oh, it's because I had to, that's because, I, I don't want to talk, 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 because I've got to cook that out first, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, this is my fault for thing. Do not worry. Um, these guys have got to cook about 42,000 different kinds of cuisines all day. They're clearing up, they're cooking, they're doing everything, and they're doing it brilliantly. Okay. I'll just do a little bit to start on this. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a pan, which I've got. You see, look at this. This is very professional, isn't it? You get your pan. Get it nice and hot. If it's going oh, to work. Typical. My last demo, everything's working beautifully now. I managed to muck up everything else, but anyway, that's fine. Put in that. <laughs> okay. Now, the schlots go in first. This is your base. You want them a little bit charred, and you want them soft. So, you know, you cook them over quite a high heat. But the key is the paste. Well, I'll show you in a minute. When I add it, you're going to cook out the paste because that infuses all the oil, and it brings out all the flavors of all the ingredients in that paste. So it's key, key, key to cook the paste first. Just a little bit there. How's it going there? You brilliant man. Is there? You see, it's so simple, that, and so easy. But I'm just going to chuck these in. And... Again, it's quite rough and ready. You don't want to burn it. But don't be too precious. You know, cooking, if there's not an ingredient, it's fine if you listen. If you're doing a souffle of bread, you have to stick to the rules. But this sort of stuff, if you don't like chili, a little bit less chili. If you don't like coriander, leave it out. Add in. This is the food that is up to you. You cook it how you like it. That is the point of cooking. Well, my sort of cooking. Uh, I can do that. Okay. So they're cooking very nicely there. This is going to have a double paste, you lucky people. So this is sort of more of a, a fresh chilli paste, you know, needs must and everything. But you'll smell it. Can you smell anything? Was it all being dragged up there? Oh, it smells pretty good up here. And that's not being, that's not sort of saying that my cooking is brilliant. It's saying that these ingredients are wonderful. Um, so here's our paste. Like that. So this is going to be, this is going to be quite spicy. So people like it spicy, yeah? Good, good, good. Okay, actually a bit more. Actually, that's going to... Those were jalapenos, weren't they? They got a kick on them. <laughs> Chef's looking a bit worried there by the amount of chilies going in. But we'll be... Uh, <laughs> now I'm going to wipe that. Yeah. Okay. Right, 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 right. So, as I'm cooking here, all these fragrances are coming out. You're getting... First of all, you get the lemongrass coming out. That really lovely sort of floral smell. And then the chilies start coming out. And the chilies... As you probably all know, don't cook chilies um, in a room with your children and your wife or your husband or your boyfriend or girlfriend. Because what tends to happen in a dry pan is it's like releasing mustard gas, tear gas. I've cleared out the house so many times at home. So if you are cooking with chilies and you're putting them straight in in a paste, open all the windows, turn on the extraction, get the kids out of the house or somewhere because you get it in a net from your wife or husband. Well, I certainly get it in a net from my wife. When I wake up the children with chili fumes, um, 
at nine o'clock at night when I'm cooking dinner. And it doesn't make me particularly popular because they come down, their eyes streaming. Um, it doesn't happen anymore. I'm not, this isn't child abuse or anything awful like that. It's just the dangers of cooking with chili sometimes. Okay, so all these smells are now coming out. All these aromas are being released, the oils. And this is your wonderful base. Okay, let's get it a bit softer, put a little bit more oil in. Now, this is going to be served because it's a northern Thai, well, it's a sort of Burmese vegetable, but they would have it with sticky rice, glutinous rice. And you might have seen that in a lot of Thai desserts. But up north and across to Burma and Laos, it's used as a rice. And you pick it up with your fingers and obviously eat like that. The other thing you do is make rice powder with it. So you dry fry the, the, the glutinous rice until it's toasted and nutty and wonderful. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, can you smell that? Oh dear, sorry. If it's a, um, anyway, I hope you'll be alright. Doing some. Um, is that the chilies that's making you cough? Oh, phew. Okay. <laughs> um, so you, you basically, yeah, this adds texture. It adds flavour, and you sprinkle it on at the end. And you'll find it always with the love. You'll find the roasted rice powder very important. Right. This now has got other paste in it as well. The same paste, apart from maybe with dried chilies. And thanks to the brilliance of these guys, it's been done for me. So what I'm going to do. Really easy. And just cook this off. There are, I was in Thailand a few months ago, and there's a fantastic uh, Aussie chef called David Thompson, one of the great experts on Thai food. He speaks Thai, he's lived there. His restaurant, Nam, is amazing, and it's like going around the Vatican with the Pope going around him, although he's obviously not Thai. But he's, um, and we go down south and we go up north and we go and find all the wonderful different regional cuisines. And um, we went to a truck stop in Chiang Mai, so you've got to try this lab. And basically, we start off with a cold blood soup called lu. And it's just blood with lemongrass and chilies. And it's cold and slightly ferric. Uh, but very nice, actually. And, uh, and then we've got, we got really sort of down and dirty with the really sort of larves made of skin and lungs. And I think he was testing me, this sort of rather idiotic Englishman coming in saying he'll eat anything. Um, I regretted that. But actually, it actually wasn't bad at all. But... You know, for me, the real food, like anywhere, like I said, is on the street. And Thai food, there aren't really Thai restaurants in Thailand as such. There's a lot of street food, a lot of it with Chinese origins. Um, and you'll find the best food in houses, like you'd find in India or anywhere else. Go and eat in the houses if you have the chance, because that's where the real fun is. Um, restaurants are great. but So as you can see, I want the pork to get slightly charred. I want that mild reaction, that lovely sort of caramelization. So you get a bit of crunch and loveliness in there. And you can see, don't worry about nice bit of sort of stuff at the bottom. It is fine. Okay. And of course, I tell you what I didn't put in that was the fish sauce, but that doesn't matter because you put it in your one, haven't you? We don't, we I think we've got any fish. Anyway. Oh, chili sauce, guys. Sorry, that's going around. Oh, is it too late? Chili, whoever wants chilies and chilies, we'll bring that around again. That's good. It's got a good kick on it. <laughs> okay, and Ingo, spring onions, just a bit of greenery. Keep it in. And all you've got is very basic, as I throw all the food all over the place. Um, it's a very, very basic, you know, bunch of ingredients. But it just, bit by bit, you're adding flavor and flavor and flavor and flavor. Because if you're going to eat food, it may as well taste good. And then, at the end, in those places in Southeast Asia, the amounts of herbs, we know the mint, we know the coriander, but you'll find herbs you've never even heard of, you know, great bushes of different exotic herbs which are served with these salads, which I certainly can't find in the UK, even in the best Thai shops. Um, and that's what makes it really, the, these sort of, herb-based salads, but they're good, you know, all that lovely greenery adding different flavours to it, but coriander and mint's just fine. So it's beginning now, you can see, to caramelise, and I, you could use a non-stick pan, I probably should have, but it doesn't matter, you want those nice crunchy bits at the bottom. And that's beginning to cook, because obviously you can have beef rare, and, but I think pork, you have to be a little bit more careful with pork even if it's good quality. It's, you know, you can't have raw pork, although they obviously eat it a lot in Thailand. Okay. 
can you, it, you're not smelling this at all, are you? It's just going up there. This is like Independence Day being in the spaceship. You've seen that movie? It's bloody huge, this place. Um, I couldn't believe it when we walked in here. It's just like, wow. Um, but it's pretty cool looking. Johannesburg is so wonderful in many ways. The one thing that perhaps is not my favorite is the traffic. It, it, it's uh, rush hour. It took us a few hours to get here this morning, I tell you. Um, and I was on the radio at some ungodly hour, and I probably had too many glasses of wine last night, so I'm only just beginning to defuzz. Um, not hungover, that would be unprofessional. <laughs> just a little bit fuzzy around the edges. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it was, yeah, we went to this fantastic restaurant last night called Fish Shop. Is it Fish? Fishmonger. Fishmonger. Ah, it was just, it was so good. And, you know, th- actually the prawns were from Mozambique, but it was to try, and, and the salmon was from Scotland, but that, that wasn't the point. There were lots of South African dishes that were just wonderful. And, you know, I know nothing really about South African food, and I've been so privileged and honoured to come and meet all these great chefs and, and, and food producers and start to learn about what really makes this vibrant and absolutely thrilling cuisine, you know, so wonderful. So anyway, in that goes there, lots of coriander. I used to hate coriander. I used to be able to taste one leaf in, in anything, but now I couldn't live without it. I think it's the most lovely herb. That's now, of course, now I'm going to do the good bit, which is the tasting. Any cook you see who doesn't taste their food, worry, because... A bit of salt, actually. It's quite hot. We don't have any fish sauce by any chance, do we? No. Don't, is that right? Sorry, there's a nightmare person coming on and sort of asking for stupid ingredients. Um, but, so look, you're beginning to get, take all this lovely caramel bit, it's cooked through, and you've got your spice, you've got your dried chilies, you've got your fresh chilies. I'd rather wing the fresh chilies, actually, but I think it adds quite a bit of nice, sort of different kind of heat to it. But, the herbs, spring onions, everything. So there we go, more all over the place. <laughs> I'm not, you see, I, at home I'm quite a clean cook and I clean as I go. Here, everything, I've used every pan, I've used everything. Um, and you can see, anyway, now that's beginning to cook well. And of course, all important, lime, because you need that balance. And again, with food of this region, it's about the balance of the salt and the sweet and the sour and the hot. Now, you don't have to have all four together, but there has to be balance. Balance is at the heart of this sort of food. So, you don't want it too salty or too hot. You just want that perfect sort of homogenous, no, homogenous is the wrong word, perfect sort of elegant balance. Okay, let's just take that off. Oh, you are a brilliant man. Thank you so much. Fish, lovely, lovely. Fish sauce smells pretty rank, is the best sauce in the whole world, I think made with anchovies or however you want it. And it just has that umami, that depth. Smelling it like that smells like, well, as you know, it doesn't smell that great fish food. I mean, fish sauce. But when you add it, it just has this richness and this depth and, you know, a bit of salt as well. But yes, I'm being, actually, I'll use it because there's lots of people. I'm being very health and safety conscious. Usually at home, I'd be picking it out with my fingers and trying it, but you don't want that, so. Oh, I'm the lovely one. We've got, now to finish it, a bit of lime. And this is key because it gives you that lovely citrus lift at the end. Good use of a spoon. Okay. Keep it mixing. Turn off everything, turn off, turn off. And again, keep trying. Keep using another spoon, another spoon. Okay, we're going now. A little bit more of the fresh herbs. Mix it in. Maybe the tiniest bit more lime. I saw another lime here. These knives are very good, by the way. I'm not paid to say that, but they are very good. Japanese, very sharp, very good. Just the last bit. I think after me, you've got Reza Mohammed, you, which you have to go and see. He is the spice king. You know, I sit sort of mucking around and cooking food I like, but this man is a master. If you can sit and wait for him, you'll be overjoyed and delighted. Okay, right. 
Now, what are we plating up on there? Oh, there. Oh, gosh. So, all your lovely love coming in. And again, like I said, this is food that you can change and do it how you like it. There's a basic way of doing it. But every cook in that part of the world would have a different recipe, different proportions. Um, and so don't fear this sort of stuff. Because like, you know, if I can do it, anyone can. And secondly, you know, adapt it to how you like it. Otherwise, there's no point in doing it. Okay. Big generous portion there. Now, you have the sticky rice powder. You just sprinkle over the top which gives it a lovely nutty flavor and texture as well. Um, and if I were a chef, well, actually, it's about the nicely, most nice presented dish I've ever had, I think. It actually looks half edible. Um, there, and now we just need our rice, which I will put here. There we go, that's the sticky rice. So, you've had the Indonesian satay that's there, and if you want more, it's here, and there's chili sauce to do it. And here, we have the pork lard, and the sticky rice. And there, ladies and gentlemen, a long last mess, destruction, chaos everywhere. That are my <laughs> those are my two dishes. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me wibble on and bang on about everything. Thank so you, Tom. And you've got an awesome book, Let's Eat Meat. Oh, yeah, sorry, I've been I just, yeah, buy my book, please. Or, <laughs> no, no, actually, don't bother, no, but you've already spent tons of cash coming here. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's a book in, in there's a brilliant bookshop, and their books by far better cooks than me. Go and buy them, but actually, it's all right. The book, um, if you like meat and stuff like that, um, it's got recipes from all over the world, and it's for the home cook, you know. I'm not a professional chef, so. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you all very much. And thank you guys. You're genius. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Big round of applause for Tom. He will be available to sign the books after the show. So just give him a minute. He'll go to help himself out and then be back. But ladies and gents, this show is definitely not possible without our awesome sponsors. How sleek does this kitchen countertop look, right? Super sexy. That's thanks to Stylestone. Neil, are you in the audience? Ah, oh, there we go. That's thanks to that GM over there. Stylestone as well as our chefs in training from the International Hotel School and all our awesome gadgets by Le Creuseau, Kay, as well as uh, Taurus and Goodfellas for taking us around here in Johannesburg as well as uh, Qantas and Handy Gas. Handy Gas obviously comes in handy, especially during load shedding. Correct, I see a few of you ladies shaking your heads. Ladies and gents, thank you so much. Um, yeah, Tom, you'll be out there in a few minutes. I will do, sorry. Awesome. Ladies Thanks, and gents, guys. please Bye. exit to my right, which is thank your you left. Thank you so much. Oh, quick, 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 quick. <laughs> Above everything else, Silestone.